Hello guys, welcome to my channel. I want to use this time to say thank you to everyone who watches my videos, who comments on my videos, who have been following to my new subscribers guys. I really do appreciate you. I know I don't say this enough but I decided to take out this time to do this on this video. Now today guys, I want to share with you guys on a very important program. Now this program is called the AIP program. AIP means Atlantic Immigration Program. Now this is a new program that is launched by four Atlantic provinces in conjunction with the Canadian government. And like I said earlier, the program is called the Atlantic Immigration Program. Now, let me quickly run you through some of the benefits of this program. For this program, there is no LMIA needed. This is one of the most stressful parts of employing foreign, temporary foreign workers into Canada. Right here in this program, there is no LMIA and there is no age limit in this program as well. And there is no proof of fund. Proof of fund is also called settlement fund. Now, usually before you can immigrate into Canada, especially for most of the programs under the express, express entry route, you need to have a certain amount of funds that you must prove that you have in your account as at the date of putting in that application. But in this program called the AIP, you do not need proof of fund. Now, another benefit of this program is that it requires a language test, okay? It requires you to pass a language test. But even with this, it only requires you to score at least a band five, you know, in your language test. Either you're doing the English test or you're doing the French test. Another important benefit of this program is that all knock codes or tier codes are accepted in this program. Knock codes or tier codes are codes that the Canadian government uses, uses to distinguish or, you know, differentiate different occupations. So under this program, most of the knock codes are accepted. The last benefit about this program is that you only require minimum experience, okay, in your field, okay, in your field of expertise to be qualified or to be eligible for this program. The program aims to bring in people to these regions to fill up job positions for which Canadian citizens or permanent residents are not available to fill. Now, in this video, I'm going to be walking you through the entire details about the Atlantic Immigration Program, the provinces that are allowed to recruit temporary foreign workers under this program. Number three, who can apply? Number four, we're going to be talking about the documents that you need to apply. Number five, how you can get a job offer. Number six, the requirements that you need to pass to be able to get a job offer. Then number seven, finally, how you can get to become a permanent resident through this program. I forgot to mention that this program is a permanent resident pathway, okay? Either directly or indirectly. I'm going to explain that further as we go in. Now, before now, this program was launched in 2017. And when it was launched, it was called AIPP, meaning Atlantic Immigration Pilot Program. So as of 2017, when it was launched, it was a huge success for the Canadian government, okay? So they decided to make it a permanent route to permanent residency. So therefore, they changed the name from Atlantic Immigration Pilot Program to Atlantic Immigration Program. The pilot in the meaning was taken away. Now, let's take a look at the map of Canada and see what where the Atlantic provinces fall in. Now, these provinces are New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, and Newfoundland and Labrador. Now, there are some important facts about the AIP. Now, these are things that are on record, okay, concerning this program. Now, it's worthy to mention that till date, about 15,000 newcomers have come in through this program as immigrants between 2017 and now. In the year 2022 alone, the Atlantic provinces welcomed at least 6,500 immigrants in key sectors like the healthcare sector, manufacturing sector, the accommodation sector, and food services sector. Let me show you the immigration quota by the federal government of Canada for the years 2023, 2024, and 2025. And we are going to see what the government is projecting for new immigrants to come to Canada. So guys, this is what the government is projecting. Now, let's go to Atlantic Immigration Program. Now, we'll find out here, okay? So the target for 2023 is 8,500. 
the target for 2024 is 11,500 and then the target for 2025 is 14,500 people. I will drop a link in the description box just in case you want to go through this. And let's talk about how you can apply. The first thing you must understand is that you do not have to be inside Canada for you to apply for this program. You can apply for this program from anywhere in the world. Now, there are two categories of people that are eligible or can apply for this program. The first set of people are skilled workers and the second set of people are international students. I will take this one after the other, but let me start with international students. For an international student to be eligible to apply under the AIP program, that student must be in students from any recognized post-secondary school institution in any of the four provinces I mentioned earlier in this video. New Brunswick, Newfoundland and Labrador, Prince Edward Island and Nova Scotia. You must be a graduate of any of these institutions in these provinces for you to be eligible to apply under this program. Now let's talk about the eligibility requirements for international students. For this category of people, meaning the international students, you do not need any form of work experience for you to apply for under the AIP program. So if you're a student and you want to apply for PR through the AIP program, you must be a graduate with a degree or a diploma certificate from any of the institutions in any of these four provinces in Canada. You need to have been a full-time student while you were studying as an international student in this school. Guys, if you watch this video to this very point and you're getting value, guys, please click on the like button. That's one way to support my channel. I appreciate you all. I will never take it for granted. Thank you. You also need to have studied for at least two years in any of these institutions. You must also be living in any of these provinces for at least 16 months during the last two years before you graduated from school. You must have a valid visa, a valid study permit or work permit while you are in Canada for your study duration. If your goal in Canada is to get permanent residence after your school, then this program is absolutely for you. No codes, which are now called tier codes, are used for this program. Now, if you don't, if you do not know your no codes, you can make use of the NOC tool finder, which I'm going to show you to find out where your occupation falls under. I'll be leaving the link of this NOC code tool finder in the description box below so that you can make use of it for your research before applying. Now, let's talk about the educational requirements. For educational requirements, you must have one of these before applying. If you have checked your knock code through the knock code to find out and your occupation falls under the tier 0 or 1 category, you must have a Canadian one year post secondary educational credential or higher. In the case where you do not have a Canadian education, then you must have the equivalent of that education, okay, in your home country. Now, one of the ways you can know if your education from your home country is equivalent to the Canadian one is by doing an ECA. ECA means Educational Credential Assessment. There are several bodies that do this, okay? We have the West. West is what I used when I did. Now, right. this is done to verify that your foreign degree or certification is equivalent or equal to the Canadian one. The second option is if your job occupation falls under the Tier 2, Tier 3, or Tier 4, then you must have a Canadian high school diploma. But if you do not have a Canadian high school diploma, then whatever education you have in your home country must be equivalent to the Canadian one. Meaning that an ECA needs to be done again to verify that your education is equivalent to the Canadian standard. Please note that your ECA report must be less than five years old at the point of applying for this program. Now we are done with the international students. Let's talk about skilled workers, foreign workers who are looking to get employed in Canada. One of the most crucial thing you must note is that work experience for this set of people, you know, can be from any part of the world. First, you need to have at least one year of work experience from your country or from whatever country you are presently. And you must have worked for at least 1,560 hours or 30 hours per week. This means that your foreign work experience is valid, okay? Let me quickly show you how you can calculate your work hours right now. You can calculate your work hours by the number of hours you work presently, whether it is full-time or part-time. You can only count paid work hours, okay? This means that volunteering acts okay or unpaid internships does not count if you are self-employed at this time your work hours cannot be used you must only count work hours that has been done within the last 12 months let's talk about language requirements remember i mentioned at the beginning of the video that you need to pass a language test to be eligible 
for this program. Either you are doing an English test, which is the IELTS, or you are doing the French test. If you are looking for a job in tier category 0, 1, 2, or 3, you have to have a minimum of CLB band 5 in English or French. For people with job codes that fall under tier category 4, you need to have a minimum score of CLB band 4 in English or French, okay? And you must note that your test result must be at least two years at the point of application. Now, let's talk about proof of funds. I know at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that you do not need proof of funds. Now, this is for a particular set of people. If you're already in Canada or you're already schooling in Canada or you schooled in Canada, you do not need proof of fund for this program. You do not need to show proof of fund if you're already working inside Canada. Let's say you're a student, okay, who has finished school in Canada in any of these provinces and you've gotten a job, meaning that you have a valid work permit. You do not need to show proof of fund, okay? Proof of fund is only required for people who are outside of Canada who are looking to immigrate to Canada through this program. So this means that if you are a temporary foreign worker who is outside Canada looking to immigrate to Canada through this program, then you need to show proof of funds. You need to have enough money to be able to take care of yourself and your family members who will come with you under this program to Canada. This proof of fund depends on your family size. So it's a case by case basis. Now guys, let's talk about how you can apply for this program. Now, to be able to apply for this program, you need to look for job offers from designated employers. Designated employers are employers who have been selected by the provinces for this program. Please note that before submitting your application, you must have a resume and a cover letter that is in the Canadian style. If you do not know how to prepare this, I did a video about it. You might check the description box below to see the link on how you can create one for yourself. I'm going to show you how you can find these designated employers. All right, guys. So this uh, this is the page where you find the designated employers, right? So when you scroll down, you will find the information. You will need to seek job opportunities with designated employers. For more information, check the provincial websites. Now, these are the provinces I mentioned to you that are under this program: New Brunswick, Newfoundland and Labrador, Nova Scotia, and Prince Edward. Edward Island. Let's just try the Newfoundland web website and see what they have for us. So when you click on it. Um, the next thing you want to do is to click on information for immigrants. You will find Atlantic Immigration Program. When you click on it, you will find designated employers. So when you click on designated employer, you will have the list of employers that are designated to employ temporary foreign workers under this program. So the same thing you are doing here is the same thing you do for any of the provinces that we saw earlier. You can also use Job Banks, which is the official website for jobs in Canada by the Canadian government. You can also use Indeed, you can use LinkedIn to search for these jobs. But the most easy way to search for these jobs is by going through the website of these provinces, like I showed you earlier. Now you have a job offer from any of these employers from these provinces. What's the next thing you want to do? You must note that the job offer you are getting must meet all of these requirements. The job you are getting must be full-time and it must not be seasonal. Number two, for the tier 0, 1, 2 and 3 categories, the job offer that you are getting must be valid for at least one year. For the tier 4 category, the job offer you are getting from the employer must be a permanent employment or a permanent role. Now, the job offer you're getting must not come from a company where you or your common law partner or spouse have majority of ownership in. Now, the job offer you are getting must be at the same level or higher for the work experience that qualifies you for that job. Now, for certain healthcare jobs, right, you do not need to have a skill of experience that is equal to or higher than what you have for what you have been employed for. If the job position is a lower role, it does not matter, you can still qualify for that job. If you receive a job offer from any employer under this program in any of these provinces, please make sure that you ask that employer for a copy of the employer's confirmation of designation. This document is very, very important. The employer has to give you this document before you can proceed. Settlement services are available for you when you've got a job offer through this program. After you have gotten a, an offer of employment from any employer under this program, a settlement plan will be 
you know, giving to you to, to enable you to, you know, settle down with your family very fast and easy. So once your settlement plan has been done, the province needs to endorse your job offer. Your employer is totally responsible for this part of the process. You do not have any need to bother about it. Now, before you submit your PR application, make sure that the endorsement has been done by the province. Enquire from your employer if the endorsement has been done. And if this is done, then you can go ahead to apply for your permanent residence. Yes. When this endorsement is done, the Canadian government sends the certificate of endorsement to your mail. You have to include your endorsement certificate in your permanent residence application. Yes. Once you have the endorsement certificate, there are two options you have here. You can either apply for permanent residence, that is if you're already in Canada, right? You can either apply for permanent residence, even if you're outside Canada, you can apply for permanent residence straight up, or you can apply for a temporary work permit. If you choose the second one, which is the temporary work permit, then you can come to Canada once your work permit application or work permit visa application is approved. When you come into Canada with this second option, you can start working in Canada while your permanent residence application is in process. Please note that you must submit your permanent residence application within 90 days from when you submitted your temporary work permit application. Most people always opt for the first option, which is to apply for permanent residence immediately. And most times it favors people who are already in Canada working. Maybe they schooled in this province, they got a job after in this province, and they're able to apply immediately for a permanent residence application, wait for the PR to be processed, and then, you know, start working. Whatever case you decide on is totally fine. It's the normal process, it's legal. I hope that this video will help you to decide if any of these provinces look very favorable to you. These are one of the provinces that you can easily get permanent residence. You know, you can easily get a job offer. This program is interesting. I told you earlier that about 15,000 people have been able to come into Canada with this program between 2017 and now. So this program is real. This program is good and you can use it. On this channel, I always try to bring different routes, different programs that you can use to migrate into Canada easily. I hope that you enjoyed this one. I'll see you on the very next one. Be good.